And just when I was certain that we were pretty much reaching saturation levels as far as Motorola One branded smartphones are concerned, along came this wonderful wee beastie here, the Motorola One Hyper. Now you can't deny we've had an awful lot of Motorola One handsets these past few months. Just go check out my Which Motorola Phone Is Best For Me roundup if you don't believe me. But the One Hyper is certainly setting itself apart from its siblings with a funky pop-up selfie camera, which means you get a gorgeous full view display, unfettered by notches or other intrusions. And at a shade under £300, the Motorola One Hyper seems to be pretty good value as well. So should you consider it as your next smartphone? Well, I've been using it as my full-time personal handset for the past week. And here is my in-depth Motorola One Hyper review. View. For more on the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now as far as looks go, I personally like the Hyper's shiny chassis. It's only plastic, sure, but this attractive deep sea blue finish is rather entrancing. A model style band runs from the base of the back to that slightly jutting camera housing, complete with the Motorola branding. A very nice little touch that breaks up the otherwise plain design. Now the Motorola One Hyper is water repellent, so it's fine if it gets splashed outside in a bit of rain, something like that. But unfortunately that plastic design does mean that it ain't the most durable of smartphones. Just a week of use and already a few little light nicks and scratches have started appearing around the edges of that plastic frame. Although that is nothing compared with the almighty gouge right here on the display. I have no bloody clue how this happened, but it is a surefire sign that you will definitely want to grab a screen protector for your One Hyper if you pick one up. Now at 200 grams, the Model One Hyper's certainly got a good bit of heft to it. And although those bezels surrounding the screen are on the skinny side, this is still a 6.5 inch smartphone. So one handed use is a bit of a pain in the ass, at least without a bit of help. Luckily though, help is at hand as you can minimize everything on the screen down with a swipe towards the corner and then restore the full screen glory with just a tap of this notification pop-up. Definitely a massive relief. And another design feature that I really love is that notifications ring light thing that encircles the fingerprint sensor. This briefly glows whenever something new ticks in. So if you have the phone face down next to you, you'll still be aware of anything awaiting your attention. And of course, you can always quickly and easily disable that in the settings if you'd rather your ring piece didn't glow. And I was mightily relieved to see the latest version of Android already slapped onto the One Hyper when I first booted it up. Android 10 is served up in a pleasingly unmolested format, pretty typical for any mode roller handset, and that includes little delights like the dark mode and the swipey gesture navigation. So yeah, as usual, mode rollers additions are few and far between, but you do get the Moto Experiences app, which adds a whole bunch of extra gesture support, including that one-handed mode, what I was banging on about earlier. You can also flip the One Hyper to get it to shut the hell up, or do a bit of a double chop for light, or even open the camera with swift wrist twist, which actually isn't recommended if you're an old arthritic twat like me. In fact, the only feature that's particularly glaring by its omission is the lack of support for face unlock. And that's something that Motorola usually offers, even with its most budget-friendly handset. So I'm guessing here they chose not to implement it because of that pop-up camera feature. It does seem particularly strange as other phones with pop-up cameras offer that face unlock feature. Maybe it's just to prevent wear and tear here on the Motorola One Hyper, but whatever, the finger scanner works a treat, so no worries. And because of that hidden selfie cam setup, you do get a full uninterrupted view of that 6.5-inch IPS screen, which as usual is an absolute belter. The Full HD Plus resolution keeps things nice and crisp despite the gargantuan size of the display, while those colours really pop with the default setup, and you can play around with the vibrancy in the display settings. For this sort of price point, the Moto One Hyper does not have many rivals as far as those media chops go. As for the audio, well, I'm a perfectly happy camper with the Motorola One Hyper on that front as well. It might just be a mono speaker setup, but perfectly loud and perfectly clear on that top volume setting, and I had absolutely no issues whatsoever with Bluetooth connectivity either. You've got a Dolby Audio feature, for tweaking the output to suit whatever you're consuming and your own personal hearing tastes, complete with full manual controls. And yeah, if you want to go wired with a pair of headphones, there is a 3.5mm port up top. Banana Rama. And more good news if you don't have a massive data allowance, you want to download a bit of Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, or whatever to keep you entertained on the go because the Motorola One Hyper offers a massive 128 gigabytes of storage and it also supports micro SD memory cards of a further terabyte in size. So you can probably download every known episode of Last of the Summer Wine. Endless hilarity. And whatever you're up to, the Motorola Hyper does it without a struggle. A Snapdragon 675 chipset provides the performance backed by 4 gigs of RAM and it does the job nicely. Very rarely did I notice any little jumps, stumbles, stutters, anything like that. And even gamers should be more than satisfied as titles like PUBG Mobile play with a very respectable frame rate on higher detail levels, even when you're gaming for a solid hour or two non-stop. It is very rare to see drops, you've definitely got a competitive edge, as long as you watch out for crazy motherfuckers.
is like this guy. Absolutely no worries on the battery front either. The Hyper crams in a mighty 4,000 milliamp cell into that rather massive frame and frankly you'd have to really punish it non-stop in order to drain it by the end of the day. Normally even with a good bit of media streaming, sat nav action, camera action, a uh, bit of gaming, stuff like that, I still generally have 25 to 30 percent left at the end of one of those busy days. However, while this phone apparently supports Motorola's snazzy new 45 watt hyper charging tech, the cheap buggers haven't actually bothered to bundle one of those 45 watt adapters in the box what you get is a turbo power charger instead and to be fair that turbo power charging tech is absolutely fine you know I've bung this thing on the plug for a half an hour it should see you through a fairly intensive day no worries at all but it's just kind of a massive prick tease throwing this hypercharged tech in our face and they're not actually giving us the ability to do it out of the box it's kind of like handing us a nice ice cold bottle of beer on a sunny day and then charging us to use a bottle opener so let's move on anyway to the hypers camera tech and on this side of things Motorola has obviously shaken things up quite a bit. Not only is the 32 megapixel selfie snapper a pop-up effort now, but around the back you also get a mighty 64 megapixel lens backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. Now there is a lot to discuss here, so I have gone and done a separate Motorola One Hyper camera review, taking a look at the photo quality, video quality and all those various features as well. So go have a squint at that for all you need to know. And that in a nutshell is what I think of the Motorola One Hyper after a week of having it stuffed inside my jeans. And I've got to say I really do like it. I think there's enough of an upgrade here over the likes of the Moto G8 Plus and those other cheaper Moto other One smartphones to make it well worth considering if you've got that sort of £300 uh, budget. And uh, the camera tech isn't quite as flexible, as versatile as the Moto other One Zooms, which is a more expensive handset, but it definitely does the job for your everyday shenanigans. So that's what I reckon, but what do you reckon? Are you tempted by the Moto other One Hyper or any of the other Moto smartphones out there right now? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts. Please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. And more importantly, have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you. Thank you.